Students at Terry Fox Elementary School are starting the weekend a little early. The Ottawa Carleton District School Board says the Orleans School is closed today due to electrical issues. The school should reopen on Monday. The Carp Mountain of Garbage is about to get bigger. The controversial proposal for a new landfill on Carp Road has received the green light from the province. Despite concerns from area residents about odor and the size of the facility, the Ministry of Environment approved the environmental assessment for the West Carleton Environmental Centre. Waste management's plans for the facility include a landfill to take 400,000 tons of trash a year and a facility for recycling and composting. The approval comes with several conditions, including plans for property value protection and a complaint response protocol. Ottawa scientists have launched groundbreaking clinical trials of a stem cell therapy to treat heart attack victims. The experimental therapy uses patients' own stem cells extracted from their blood soon after a major heart attack. They are genetically enhanced and then transfused back into the hearts of the same patients. An estimated 100 patients will be treated at the Heart Institute and St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto over the next two years. An Ontario man has been told no charges will be laid against nursing home workers who allegedly abused his mother. The law is the only thing that we can depend on to uh, protect our seniors. And if that's not going to be there, then it's open season on our seniors. A hidden camera at a Peterborough long-term care facility recorded footage of the treatment received by the 85-year-old woman who suffers from Alzheimer's. One worker wiped her nose on her bed sheets and another aggressively handled the woman, waving a cloth smeared with feces near her face. Four staff members have been fired, but police say no charges will be laid. All three parties at Queen's Park agree it's time for the legislature to look at the rules governing pol politicians' expenses. Liberal House Leader John Malloy says he is disturbed a loophole allowed Tory finance critic Peter Sherman to bill taxpayers over $20,000 for a second residence. Sherman represents the Thornhill riding north of Toronto, but claimed the maximum housing allowance last year for a house he owns on Niagara on the Lake. Tory leader Tim Hudak says Sherman has agreed to stop allow accepting the house allowance. Canada and several other G20 nations are pledging further help for civilians in Syria. Canada announced this morning it will send an additional $45 million in humanitarian aid to assist civilians affected by the conflict. The federal government is also backing U.S. calls for a missile strike against the Assad regime. Simply put, I don't think anyone debates the fact that, uh, that Syria possesses a large stockpile uh, of chemical weapons. U.S. President Obama hopes to win support from other leaders to punish Syria for last month's suspected chemical attack on civilians, but both Russian and Chinese officials have given a firm no. The railway at the center of the Lac Megantic disaster this summer could be sold by the end of the year. The trustee for Montreal, Maine and Atlantic says he's been approached by several potential bidders. MMA suggests its sale will be needed to repay creditors and victims of the fiery disaster in July. 47 people were killed and 40 build buildings destroyed when a train derailed and exploded. The company that removed one of its birth control pills from the market last week due to a packaging error is now recalling a second oral contraceptive. Mylan Phar Pharmaceuticals is recalling Esme 28. It's because the company cannot rule out the possibility that the product was affected by the same packaging mix-up that occurred with Freya 28. No packaging errors have been reported with Esme 28. Brian Burke is back in the NHL, but one of the NHL's biggest personalities vows to sit in the background in his new job. Burke has been named the new president of hockey operations for the Calgary Flames. He will assume overall responsibility of the sports side of the Flames, but Burke says he doesn't intend to be front and center and will let general manager Jay Fester speak for the organization. Meantime, it's a big step forward for the city of Calgary in their flood recovery. The Saddle Dome is almost ready to welcome back the Flames for the NHL season. Water reached the eighth row of seats during heavy flooding in June. Crews worked for 69 straight days to fix the arena with two shifts working around the clock. 